show IPM route. Okay, let's do this one more time. And now what you can see here is you're not seeing the, uh, the loopback interface that we created uh, because we didn't join, if you remember, we didn't join. Now if I were to do this right now while this ping is going, if I were to do go under uh, the, uh, the interface here, which is interface loopback 100, and do a IP, IGMP join, 224.7.7.7. Now what we should see here is it going under the uh, outgoing interface here for this. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. Now if I do a show IP M route. Make sure I did this correctly. And of course, I jacked it up. Uh, I created loopback 200 and put the address of 100. Okay. okay, this is what I wanted to show you here. This is the uh, this is what we wanted the output. So if I do a show IP M route, what you can see now is that I've added the loopback 20 interface here to the 224.7.7.7 uh, group because uh, if you look here on a show run, you can see here that, so what you wanted to see here is we created the loopback <coughs> 200, we put it in the sparse mode, and we made it join the group 224.7.7.7. Now when we did the show IP M route, you can see now that the group 224.7.7.7, this rendezvous point here, which is the local router, is now forwarding this traffic out its loopback 200 interface. Now this is different than uh, dense mode, this is one of the main differences, whereas in dense mode it floods it out uh, no matter what, it'll flood it out and it'll prune the interfaces okay, based on whether it's, you know, whether the router uh, has an IGMP join request or not. Uh, but run, you know, for uh, PIM sparse mode um, it waits for a request to come in and then it builds the connection from the host to the destination that's trying to reach the host of the multicast group. So for here we had the host 10.1.10.1. Uh, .1 okay, so, so router 2 knows how to get to 10.1.10.1. .1 .10 .1. um, because it's listening on the 224.7.7.7 network. Router 3, if you do a show IP M route, you can see that it's learning about the 224.7.7.7. And if we would have added, say, another router in here, <coughs> and it was running sparse mode with all of its interfaces and and if there were no you know uh, if there were no interfaces off of the router 
that were trying to join the group, the router wouldn't send any join messages to the rendezvous point. So you can see here that there is a, a savings uh, from dense mode to sparse mode. There's a big savings in uh, a bandwidth that's consumed um, over the network. So uh, you can see dense mode floods the network and waits for it to get those requests you know uh, to not you know to not receive whereas sparse mode waits and doesn't flood the network unless it receives join requests from uh, specific hosts so that's the basics of PIM sparse mode um, Thanks for staying with me. I know we had some problems here with our network. Our, it was probably just with me, but anyway. Um, what we'll do is we'll probably do a couple more multicast labs later on. I'll get into uh, setting up some other stuff, maybe do some uh, some filtering and you know changing some timers and uh, uh, time to lives and stuff like that. So. So in review, we have here uh, basically two processes that take place. The source sends the packets to the router called the rendezvous point. The source here is, you know, our loopback 10.1.10.1, uh, which you know, uh, which initialized the multicast stream to 224.7.7.7, .7 and then. The rendezvous point sends the multicast packets to the routers that have registered. You mean registered? Excuse me. I mean registered <laughs> to receive packets for that group, which was, um, as we set up here, the router 2's uh, loopback interface of 200 and router 3's loopback interface of 20 all the other interfaces and everything else was pruned uh, thus saving the bandwidth on the network so i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, i look forward to uh to talking to you guys soon in the next one